Ayo! Welcome to episode seven of Create This Book Three by Mariah Elizabeth and Ashley Monet. That would be me. Friendly reminder, I have an entire playlist of my Create This Book Three videos linked in the description if you wanna get your binge on. In the meantime, we have four new prompts to tackle this week. So enough of me talking. Let's jump right in and see what I can create. Okay, first prompt of the week. Create a word. Invent a new word by combining words that already exist. Write the definition here. Okay, so let's start with my word. The word I'm making is a combination of two existing words. First word, here's a clue. This is known as the feel-good hormone. It gives you a sense of pleasure. As part of your reward system, it also gives you the motivation to do something when you're feeling pleasure. Can you guess what it is? Dopamine. Second word, here's the definition. The high-pitched crying noise of a cat or some kinds of bird. The answer, mew. So if we squish them together, we've got dopa mew. Dopa mew. What is dopa mew? Dopa mew is the immeasurable feeling of pleasure one gets when the hormone dopamine is released as a result of any contact with a feline. Let's use it in a sentence. He jumped on my lap. Here comes the dopa mew. Now to decorate this page, I didn't want to do much. I wanted it to feel sterile, like you literally tore a page out of the dictionary. But it needed to stand out against the white of the page, so just a simple border will do. For the other side, I'm drawing a simple silhouette of a woman and her kitty. She's receiving a fresh dose of dopamine, so I'm going to draw her brain just radiating happiness and love. Then for the background, I had an idea to draw the chemical formula for dopamine. So I started by repeating that molecular hexagon hexagonal pattern across the background. Now I'm going in with black, first to fill the silhouettes of my lady and kitta. Then I drew that dopamine formula with ultra thick black lines, knowing of course I was gonna go over everything with white to make it pop. That looks so nice. Couple of juicy highlights, sign and date, and we can switch back over to the book. Throw a little pink into the prompt and glue in our dopamine art. Oh, I love this one. Dare I say it's pretty dope? No? Okay. Well, as someone who's incredibly familiar with the phenomenon of dopamine, I'm glad that I now have a word for it. It'll catch on. Stop trying to make dopamine happen. It's not gonna happen. Next prompt. Create jewelry. Draw a character adorned with beautiful jewelry. In thinking of a character that might be drawn to jewels, uh, one immediately came to mind, and that is the Niffler from Fantastic Beasts, the Harry Potter spin-offs. He is so dang cute, kind of like a hedgehog platypus hybrid creature who is obsessed with all things shiny and hoards them in his little belly pouch. Oh, I want one. For now, I'll have to settle with just drawing one. This little guy is gonna have all of the gold things. He's holding some gold coins. He's got a dazzling diamond ring on his arm. There's a fancy pocket watch flying through the air. He's draped in pearls and gold chains and is even donning a golden crown. Also, he's set atop a bed of gold coins, living his most extra life right now. Once I had the main components of the drawing laid out, then I went in with my micro micron. It's actually a 0 .005 micron liner, but like, I think it's so much more fun to say micro micron. Micro micron. Anyways, these itty bitty details just set this whole thing off. All of those ornate little jewelry details, just yes. For coloring, my plan was to use alcohol markers everywhere except the background, cause that was too much space to cover with a marker. So instead I was gonna use watercolor for that and then marker everywhere else. But once I got started with a watercolor, I fell into the zone and just could not stop myself. It was like, oh, I'll just do the gold jewelry too. And then, well, maybe just the feet and hands and snout. And then, well, now that I've come this far, better just to do it all in watercolor. A total domino effect. Now the Niffler's fur is black in color, so I was just gonna do several shades of gray and black. But I went a little crazy and thought, if I actually did blue tones, that would really pop against the yellow background. I actually really like it, and I think I might try some more bold color tones anytime I need to do grayscale moving forward in future colorings. I don't know. We'll see. It's time to clean up the liner and add some colored pencil details. 
Yes. And this prompt was screaming for juicy highlights and there were so many of them. So here's an extra long juicy highlight time. Now back to the book. We need to fancy up the prompt. Just gonna color in this necklace, give it some juicy highlights of its own, and into the book goes our Niffler. Oh my god! I love him so, so, so much. So stinking cute. This one was super fun to do. All of the sparkle and shine. I feel so happy inside my body right now. Okay, let's bring it down for our next prompt. Create disaster. Draw a landscape or setting in ruin. When I think of our world in ruin, I sometimes think of Wally, a dystopian perspective on what the future holds for our planet. With towers of garbage, clouds of smog, and general destruction everywhere, Earth is no longer habitable. Wally was a great movie and had a real lesson to be learned. Unfortunately, it feels like we're still moving toward that lifestyle, and the future for our planet seems pretty bleak at times. Really sad when you get to thinking about it. I don't like to get political on here, but let's be real. No matter who you are or what you believe, this planet is one we all share. Taking care of it is not an issue of politics. It's an issue of survival for everybody. It's like some people never grew up watching Fern Gully. No, no, you mustn't do that. Here. Can't you feel its pain? <laughs> get with it, guys. Anyways, that's my PSA for this episode. Now back to the art. That Wally drawing was complex, lots of little details. But now we can move on to the background. I'm still on my watercolor kick, working in layers to create those trash towers in the distance, as well as random litter all over the ground. The whole setting has a yellowy brown hue to it, thanks to all of the air pollution. Let's add some smog clouds. And now for Wally himself, I used my watercolors in yellows and grays for his base colors. Then, just like the Niffler, punched it up with some colored pencils. This really took it to the next level. All of those little rust spots, yes. A couple of highlights, and then cleaning up the outline. I was feeling like he needed to stand out from the background just a little more, so I added a bold white outline all around him, almost like a sticker effect. Super happy with that look. And now we can glue him in. I do love how this one came out. Wally is forever adorable, but I can't lie. Like the sadness it evokes from me definitely has this page feeling like a downer. I guess that means I met the prompt though. This page feels like disaster, feels like ruins. And with that, we are on to our last prompt of the week. Create a duo. Draw two people, places, or things that are better together. Now, because I love drawing people, I had immediately considered drawing a human duo but I just couldn't decide who to pick. There are so many iconic ones. Jay and Silent Bob, Wayne and Garth, Lennon and McCartney, Sonny and Cher, Beavis and Butthead, Mario and Luigi. I couldn't do it. I switched gears over to my safe space, food. Now don't get me wrong. There are plenty of amazing food duos out there too. Mac and cheese, peanut butter and jelly, milk and cookies, coffee and donuts. But I wanted to highlight one in particular that is my new jam, and that is chicken and waffles. I am 32 years old and I just tried chicken and waffles for the first time this year. I know, I know, but it is simply amazing. So I felt I should give it my endorsement for anyone out there who has been hesitant to try it themselves. I decided to go cartoony on this one, drawing a little fried chicken drumstick, holding hands with a sliver of waffle, and they just got married. Aww. It's like how this dish feels for me. A new marriage of two foods I have always appreciated separately, but are so much better together. So I have this weird little quirk with my food where I do not like blending sweet and savory flavor profiles. I hate it. Like if I have a breakfast plate with waffles and syrup, I have to make sure the syrup touches nothing else on the plate or else it's ruined. Meanwhile, I married someone who actively dips his sausage and bacon into the syrup. Blech. I bet you do that too, don't you, you little freak? Yeah, no, no, I get it. I, I'm the freak. I'm the weirdo. Anyways, with that quirk, naturally, chicken and waffles just sounded like a nightmare on a plate. And for 32 years, I have avoided facing that nightmare. 
But then one recent night, I made my famous spicy chicken tenders. And after taking a bite, Cody says, this would be the best with some waffles. I was annoyed at the blasphemy, but I did remind him that we had frozen waffles in the freezer if he wanted to go for it. A quick pop in the toaster and there he had it. One bite and his reaction was just so over the top. I just had to know. I had to try it. And oh my God, it broke all of the rules, but in the most amazing way. I can truly say now, I love chicken and waffles. And I will eat them with a fox, in a box, in a house, with a mouse. I will eat them here or there. I will eat them anywhere. I do so love chicken and waffles. So here's the finished page. I spent so long raving about chicken and waffles that I didn't really talk about the picture much, but you get it. I used markers and drew a cartoon of chicken and waffles. Pretty self-explanatory. This is just so cute, and I'm happy to give this amazing food duo a little shout out. Another week has come and gone, so let's do our little recap. We created a word, dopamu, a combination of dopamine and mu that gives a name to the pleasurable feeling associated with cat contact. There needed to be a word for that because cat dopamine just outdoes every other type. Facts. We created jewelry. A watercolor of a fantastic beast, the sweet little Niffler, shrouded in shiny, sparkly gold and jewels and riches aplenty. Fabulosity level, 10 out of 10. I love this one so much. Definitely my favorite of the week. I want a Niffler. They need to exist. We created Disaster, a watercolor painting of our planet as seen in Wally, completely ruined. While I do love the look of it and I'm happy with how it came out, it does make me feel so, so sad. Let's all do our part to take care of our planet and try to keep this from becoming a reality. And lastly, we created a duo, a cute little cartoon of the incredible food duo of chicken and waffles. What a marriage of amazing flavors. My mouth is currently watering. Friendly reminder to always try new things or you might miss out on something wonderful for 32 years. I had so much fun working on these prompts this week. And since I'm from the future, I can tell you that I've got a fun little bonus video coming out later this week. Not to mention we are creeping up to 2000 subscribers. Are you one of them? Cause if you're not, you know, unless you want me to be sad or something, because obviously if you don't, it's because you hate me, right? Anyways, I do have a special way I wanna celebrate once we do reach the 2K. And I've got a super big collab in the works along with a few other awesome YouTube artists. That's probably gonna take a while to get out, but it's definitely happening. So there's some exciting stuff ahead for us. If you wanna see all of it, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And until next time, a goodbye.